Hey, hey. Hey, guys. Nice to meet you. I'm Damian from ForexVault.com, and I'm very happy that you're attending this webinar. Hey, five people over here already. Very good thing. So feel free to use the, the chat or the question section just simply to, to tell me that uh, you're actually hearing me, so I will know, and you're like seeing our, our big and beautiful logos. I will know that everything goes okay and everything's set up. So if you can hear me, feel free to type something for me. So I will know, like, uh, hey, 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 Paul, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Very happy that you're attending. Where are you from? Where are you guys from? Currently, I'm from, uh, originally, I'm from Bulgaria, of course, uh, from Varna, which is a seaside town. You <laughs> Actually, I am currently located in a small village near my hometown, Varna, which is located at, on the Balkan Peninsula. This is like the Black Sea. It's a seaside town, South Africa. Very nice. So you're pretty much on the sea yourself. That's a good thing. Very good thing. Hey, Alfred, nice to see you too. Very glad that you're attending. Six people over here already. So I hope that more people are going to join. We've prepared a very interesting topic for you today. And we have a guest lecturer, which is like uh, awesome, in my opinion, a guy who is very talented. Uh, his name is Victor. And he's going to talk today about how to trade the news on the forex market, which is, by the way, a very, like, uh, probably one of the most interesting and least understood topics in forex trading. So uh, I assume that we're, we're going to do a like pretty interesting uh, webinar session. Furthermore, we decided that we do the webinar during the weekend this time. So I hope that more people are going to join uh, because uh, usually when we conduct webinars. The webinar is like uh, suitable for people in a certain time zones. However, other people are working, so we decided like to use day off, uh, like a weekend. So maybe more people are gonna join. So very good. And Alfred, where are you from, Alfred? Yeah, six attendees. All right, all right. We're waiting a little bit more until some some more people join. In the meantime, I'm gonna like tell you about some of the more interesting uh, economic releases during the past week. So, uh, hmm. so I start from like on Tuesday, on June 6th, we had like uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia announced interest rates at 1.5 percent unchanged interest rates as expected. So this is pretty much very like important to know. Then we had like later in the same day the uh, gross domestic product announcement, the quarterly for the first quarter of Australia at 0.3 percent, which uh, like uh, which uh, exceeded the expectation with 0.1, since the expectation was for 0.2 percent. Uh, the other thing related to the Australian gross domestic product is that uh, during the previous quarter it was like 1.1 percent so we pretty much had like a decrease in the growth of Australia crude oil inventory is very important uh, they were announced uh, at the more than expected uh, number of 3.295 million barrels which exceeds the expectation for like 6 million uh, then we had the GDP of Japan for the first quarter at the, at the worst than expected rate of 0.3 percent because the expectations were for 0.6 percent and the previous release was for 0.5 percent so again we have another slowdown in the gross domestic product uh, this time of Japan and the deposit faculty rate of the European Union at minus 0.4 percent as expected and of course, the interest this interest rates decision of the European Central Bank at zero percent interest rates, as expected, everything stays the same. Also, something very interesting: the Chinese trade balance this time was announced at a worse than expected rate, at forty point eighty one billion. <laughs> Can you believe this? Like China having worse than expected trade balance. I mean, it's still pretty positive, <laughs> 40, 41 billion. But uh, yeah. Pretty much these were like the most important announcements. And then on Friday we had the employment change of Canada, uh, 54.5 thousand, on only 11 thousand expected. So this is maybe five times better than the expectation. Pretty important event in my opinion. 
So let's check out seven attendees already. Alfred says he is from Malaysia. Yeah, that's good. Eastern part <laughs> from me. So and Alfred says next big thing is whether the Fed rate hike. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is like, um, in my opinion, is uh, I mean, everyone expects that the Fed. I mean, they announced it, that they plan to maybe do it. But uh, yes. If they hike the rates, maybe we'll see like a lower dollar. And actually, when I'm looking at the chart of the euro dollar, it has been the dollar was pretty bearish. Uh, but that's a, that's a normal thing in my opinion. Since like during the past maybe couple of years, absolutely, the euro dollar was generally ranging between the support level at 1.05 and the resistance at 1.15. So after the price interacted with the point at 1.05, it pretty much bounced in bullish direction as it did during the last two interactions with this level and created a run which is now expected to reach maybe the resistance at 1.15 as the euro dollar did during the last two interactions with the same support level. But uh, you never know, the price might turn around, this might be a turning point or maybe we can see a breakout in the 1.15 resistance. By the way, interesting stuff happened in the United States around the, the current president, Donald Trump. You never know people like in the government, they start speaking about an impeachment. So I believe that part of the negative impacts from the dollar are maybe caused by this event. So uh, this is something that we need to be careful about if you're trading dollars, of course. But uh, yeah, still. The interesting thing is that during the last three years, the euro dollar was generally decreasing, and the current state of the euro dollar uh, is ranging, in my opinion. It is consolidating for sure between these two levels I mentioned. And step by step, the price takes over a, a resistance after a resistance, although it pretty much hesitates around the 1.1250 level currently. And maybe it is currently correcting in order to try a test that is bullish trend that started at the beginning of April, maybe. But you never know. This is something that is about that we are about to see during the last few weeks, during the next few weeks. So pretty interesting thing. So according to my clock, it is currently eight past six p.m. Is this? And uh, by the way, since uh, Alfred is from Malaysia, I'm currently writing in Google what is the time in Malaysia. So, hey, 11 p.m. So it, it's still not that bad. <laughs> we apologize for the late hour, Alfred, but uh, next time we plan to do the webinar, maybe it might be in a better, like, uh, in a better time for you, but you never know. By the way, in our private trading group, I'm not sure if you guys are attending, so if you don't, since you're members of the private trading community of Forex Vault, you're, uh, you're, uh, you have access to this private trading community, so feel free to request your membership at support at forexvault.com if you don't have still access. But uh, yes, we ran a poll over there and a lot of people voted that uh, they would like to see the webinars at 6 p.m. Uh, UTC, which is approximately maybe just uh, yeah maybe three hours from now. So maybe the next webinar could even be like later for Alfred. So it is good that uh, you state your preferences about webinars so we can have these in mind when scheduling the webinar because we pretty much try to cover different time zones for uh, like all the people who are trying to, to see our webinars. And by the way, we increase the, the quantity of the webinars to two per month. So every private member of Forex Vault now will see two webinars per month, which is like a double. <laughs> and in future, maybe we will increase them even more. And also in the private trading community, in the group, you can have, you can see these live analysis sessions that I am launching. <laughs> at least once per week where I simply go live on Facebook and I share my screen and my beautiful face that you're currently looking at. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, different people like members request a chart analysis and I simply pop up my chart 
and we discuss different charts, the euro dollar, for example, British pound, American dollar, whatever you request, even the cross pairs. So we create pretty much a lot of uh, interesting discussions. So I believe that now it would be better if we switch to the webinar. And today, Victor Neustroyev, our friend, is going to talk about how to trade the news in Forex trading. So uh, just uh, I'm going to say like a couple words about Victor. He's like a long year of trader, educator, market analyst. And he's been dealing like with a different trading instrument, not only Forex. But uh, today we're going to talk about Forex and how to trade the news in Forex trading. So I would like to introduce Victor to you. And I'm currently like shutting off my camera and my mic. And Victor is going to, to come on your screen to introduce himself in a more detailed way. Hey, Victor. That's him. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar. And uh, first, let me introduce myself. Um, as Damian said, my name is Viktor Neustroyev. I'm a private trader. Uh, since 2003, I have been trading financial markets, starting with Forex, of course, and then I broadened my horizons to commodity markets. So um, now I specialize on agricultural markets because I consider them to be more transparent. But uh, I also have some strategies that work on Forex. And uh, today we will be speaking about one of them. It is new trading strategy. So I will turn off my camera and we will start with this presentation. Uh, this is a disclaimer. Be sure to read it. So, of course, there are a lot of ways to trade news, but I will try to explain you how to trade the market after an important event release. To be precise, not straight after the release, but 1 to 15 minutes later, when the market comes down. And our task will be to recognize a certain trading pattern and to hope that it will repeat next time. Okay, I hope you read it. Uh, this is the topic of our webinar, and this is the plan. First of all, we are going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of using the strategy that I suggest. Of course, trading news can be different. You may open a trade just in time of a certain news release, but um, it seems too hard for me. When the market is turbulent, it's a very difficult task to catch the price. If you try to do so, you may notice that it's impossible to open a trade at the price you want. Uh, because uh, there, there is always a slippage, and of course it uh, reduces your strategy profitability. If, if we speak about the strategy you're going to learn in this webinar, there is no need to open a trade in time of the news release. That's why I consider it to be the most important advantage of this strategy. You have to open a trade a few minutes after the release, when the market usually stops to fluctuate. The second advantage is that it's easy to define if there is a good chance to enter the market. I provide you with a strict algorithm how to identify that now it's a good situation to open a trade in this market. And this type of trading does not require much time. You need to be in front of your monitor just five minutes before the release and 30 minutes after the release, and not every day. I'm, I will also check if there are any questions in the chat. Yeah, OK. Uh, so if speaking about disadvantages, there is one main disadvantage of this strategy. Uh, trades are seldom. You trade a few times a week depending on markets you trade and a number of events. Actually, for me, this is a, not a disadvantage because uh, I like strategies that trade rarely, but 
uh, strategies that have high profit factor. But uh, I, I know that maybe some of you prefer high frequency trading. Uh, what I also want you to know is that you don't have to trade if today there is no news in your calendar. Of course, there are more disadvantages, but uh, I think that they are not significant. I can also mention that uh, there is another disadvantage. When you open a trade, you don't know how much money you will earn or lose. So it's inability to predict the profit or loss per trade. Okay, I see that now we have a basic view if this strategy is suitable for you or not. I hope it is because in my opinion, this is going to be the best new trading strategies which can bring you money nowadays. Uh, it's extremely important for all traders to learn about the various indicators and forex news events and releases that shape the markets. Also, you should know which data to look out for, what it means and how to trade it. It will help you to become more profitable and it will set up the road to long-term success. So now I will tell you about top five market news events that you should pay more attention. The first one is central bank rate decision. Each month the various central banks of the world economies meet to decide or Uh, about the interest rate that uh, they are responsible for. So they decide uh, whether to leave rates and change uh, raise rates or lower rates and uh, the outcome of this decision is extremely important to the currency and uh, to traders of course. An increase in rates is generally seen as bullish for the currency and the decrease in rates is bearish for the currency. But uh, an unchanged decision can be either bullish or bearish depending on the current economic conditions. I just want to show you one example. Uh, for example, since the ECB cuts the Eurozone rate to 0.05, it happened in September 2014. Here it is. EURUSD has since fallen by over 2,000 pips. Hey, Victor, sorry for interrupting you. I just wanted to say that we have a question from Sundar uh, Kambam, and he's asking uh, the following question. He says, these new trading strategies are applicable mostly for major pairs or one can also look at other cross pairs or minor pairs. In other words, he's asking if the news events are applicable for most of the, like, forex pairs or all of them or only for the majors. <coughs> no, not of course for the majors. Uh, for example, in this webinar, I will show you an example when I use a cross currency. Um, I used uh, British pound against uh, Japanese yen and um, usually I recommend you to trade uh, yen cross courses because they are more volatile. I will speak about it later but yes, so you should um, um, find out uh, the currency pair that is uh, affected by a certain um, news release. So if it's if it's a cross currency, it's okay. It's not only majors. Okay, I think we can continue with GDP. Okay, so uh, the second uh, event that you should uh, pay attention is GDP. Uh, so um, it is gross domestic product. Uh, it's an important indicator of economic health in a country. When GDP falls below market expectations, currency values tend to fall. 
and when GDP outdoes expectations, uh, currency tends to rise. So, just one more example. Uh, it's uh, dollar, American dollar against Japanese yen, and uh, when Japan's GDP shockingly shrunk to one and six percent in November uh, 2014, uh, the the Japanese yen fell sharply against dollar because traders anticipated future central bank intervention. Uh, the third market news event I want to mention is Consumer Price Index. It is the most widely used inflation measure. This index gives information about the historical average prices paid by cons consumers for a basket of market goods. And uh, it highlights whether the same goods are costing more or less for consumers. So why is it important? Because central banks monitor this release to help guide them in their rate and policy settings. Uh, in case of inflation, they can rise an interest rate. So one more example, and again it was in November 2014. Uh, it was Canadian CPA, C CPI, uh, it beat market expectations and uh, a Canadian dollar subsequently traded up to a six-year high against Japanese yen. Oh, th this, uh, this is indicator I like most, it's an employment rate. It's crucial to markets because this indicator works as indicator of health of an economy. Alongside the unemployment rate, you should pay more attention to the two most important labor statistics. They are ADP and NFP figures. They release each month with uh, NFP taking prime position. I'm going to tell you more about uh, these non-farm statistics later on this webinar. Uh, moreover, uh, we are going to create a trading pattern based on its statistics. So uh, the last one, so the last uh, market news event I want to mention is forms meeting. Uh, uh, as, okay, so um, although the central bank meetings of all economies are extremely important, but America's Federal Open Market Committee meeting requires more attention because American dollar is uh, uh, c currently it is the world's reserve currency. The statements uh, released by committee is regarded by traders looking for clues as how central bank will behave in future. And usually forms meeting can cause huge market volatility. Uh, what else? Uh, from these meetings we will also learn about changes in monetary policy such as uh, announcement of quantitative easing. Uh, there is an example, um, since ECB announced their latif, l latest quantitative easing program on January 22nd, it was here, uh, EURUSD has fallen by over 600 pips. All right, Victor, sorry for interrupting you again. We have another comment from Sundar Kambam our friend, so he mm -hmm. says, some pairs don't behave the way one expects. Example, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar somehow never reacts to fundamental news as much as one expects. If Australian GDP increases, still sometimes 
the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar never moves up. Sometimes it stays put at the same level or even goes down. Okay, yeah. So um, it's not only if uh, about uh, if GDP rises or not. It's about market expectations. So if market participants uh, expect uh, GDP to uh, be at a certain level, but it's lower, then market can go down or can uh, uh, <clears throat> can uh, tr trade can trade flat or something else uh, but uh, yeah it, it's it's all about expectations so you uh, what i want you to teach in this webinar uh, uh, is that your task will be not only to use uh, general advices for example if gdp is uh, rising then the currency will rise your task will be to notice a trading pattern for example uh, Mm, oh, you will definitely see it later in the webinar, but uh, just uh, you should notice the, the market reaction uh, for the 5 to, to 30 minutes after the release. And uh, this is uh, the time when we can make money. I don't want you to make uh, long trades like, for example, uh, if GDP is growing, then you're gonna open long trade. It will be, I think, it's a bad trade, and you won't earn money on it. So uh, <clears throat> you should find trading patterns that uh, repeat. And uh, believe me, they are very, um, they happen very often, and uh, you will see it. For example, today I'm gonna teach you uh, four different trading patterns. And uh, so you will be able to use them. Okay, so I hope I answered the question. Uh, now I want to switch. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. I guess has a question. He says, so which pairs are most sensitive to fundamental announcements? <clears throat> uh, it's. Uh, usually it's uh, pairs which are more volatile, for example, uh, Japanese yen cross courses, like uh, Euro against Japanese yen, uh, British pound against Japanese yen, and other, other cross courses. <clears throat> okay, so if that's all, then we continue. So now I would like you to show a Forex calendar and um, then I will demonstrate you how to detect that this particular news is important. Uh, you can find Forex calendar at website of your broker or at some independent website or Forex forums. Uh, in this webinar I don't want to show you any broker's websites, that's why I uploaded the calendar into my Excel template. So uh, I hope now you can see that uh, here is a list of all events which may have an impact on forex markets uh, or on a certain currency. So uh, I, al I have already applied the filter. I chose only news which has high or medium impact on the market. Uh, and of course, um, I recommend you to trade only liquid pairs. So that's why I uh, suggest to filter these events selecting only that currencies that you trade. So uh, New Zealand dollar, American dollar, Japanese yen, British pound, Euro, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar and Australian dollar should be left. <clears throat> Okay, so let me tell you a few words about this calendar. This column is uh, the day of the week. Uh, the next is the date of the event. The third column is uh, the time of the release. Um, so, for example, I mm, use the time of my MetaTrader platform because it's easy to find um, 
uh, the moment of the release in this case. <clears throat> so the, this column is currency that this event is affected on. Uh, and this one is news title. Uh, so here are three left columns and uh, this is specific values of this indicator. The first is actual, the next is forecast, what market participants are waiting for this indicator to be and the last is previous. Usually it's uh, uh, the last month value. Okay, so uh, I hope you know how to use this calendar and uh, now I'm going to teach you how to make a research to define what news are important and how to identify the trading patterns. Uh, again, I created a template. Uh, <clears throat> so what you can see here, here is the name of the event and four time frames, one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, uh, 30 minutes. Uh, what you should do, you should fill in this table. First you should fill in uh, dates when this news release was uh, published. For example, uh, now I'm talking about non-farm payrolls. So you will fill dates. Uh, I recommend you to choose the last 10 dates to make your statistics more representative. And here you should uh, fill in prices, open, high, low, close. And in these columns and also in this uh, you should insert the price difference between high end open and low end open. So now I would like to show you the effect of non-farm employment change on the market. So I have already mentioned that uh, this uh, event is also called non-farm payrolls. And this indicator measures a change in the number of employed people during the previous month, excluding the farming industry. Uh, so your task now is to fill in this table. You should use any trading platform and any Forex calendar. First you open the calendar and find last 10 dates when this news was released. As I remember, non-farm payrolls releases every first Friday of every month. So the first date is the 5th of May and here it is. Uh, the actual number was 211,000 but expected number 194,000. Uh, then you should also find the previous date and uh, fill another line in the table. So what I did, I put 211 here and uh, 194 as an expected value. So here is the difference between uh, actual and expected number. Uh, difference is positive. It means that uh, the market reaction could be positive, but it's not obligatory. So how to complete this table? Uh, you should open your trading platform and try to complete these columns. Okay, I will show you. So uh, if there is no data in your MetaTrader 4, you may download it using History Center. Uh, just click uh, Download twice. Okay, so what I decided to do. Uh, for example, I decided to find out how how strong this news affects American dollar against Japanese yen. 
So I found uh, the 5th of May, here it is, and the time of this news release, and now I see all prices on M1 time frame. Here are they. Uh, so uh, you can see it on the slide. Open is 112 and 50. High is 112 and 70. Low is the same as um, open. And close is 156. So then I calculate uh, the difference between high and open. It's 20 pips. Here it is and um, there is no difference between low and open, so I put uh, zero here. So now I should switch to M5 time frame and do the same thing. Here it is. This is M5 time frame of the same currency, American dollar against Japanese yen, and the time of the event, and here you can see prices. Open price is always the same, and here is high, low, and close prices. So you should do the same for M15 and M30 time frame. Um, I don't want to waste your time, that's why I did everything the day before the webinar. So here it is. All dates and all data is filled. Uh, so, uh, is everything clear about data collection? If not, please ask me questions. So, I will wait for, for a few seconds for your questions. Guys, don't be ashamed to ask questions at any time. Feel free to use the question sections or the chat. We're uh, like constantly watching both of these two tools uh, of our GoToWebinar platform. So whenever you have a question of any time, feel free to simply ask it the, the way that Sundar did like uh, a few minutes ago. We will immediately like pause and then we will come back uh, in order to answer the question. And here it is the question. Sundar asks a question now and he says, do you have an algorithm which helps in collecting the data or do we have to do it manually? <clears throat> Usually I do it manually but <clears throat> I want someone to program it. Uh, the, uh, another thing why I do it manually is because sometimes there is a mistake in quotes and you won't recognize it if you use um, for example a script or expert advisor uh, but uh, you will you, you will look, you will notice it only in case if you uh, fill data manually. But uh, I'm 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 also thinking about programming it because uh, it takes uh, so much time. For example, to fill this table uh, to fill this table um, takes about two hours. And if you want to uh, analyze all all Oh, I mean, not all, but at least 20 market events, then you should spend 40 hours and it's too much, of course. Yeah, I'm thinking about programming it. But currently I don't have a script. Okay, so if there are no questions, then we will continue and um, uh, now we will speak about pattern detection. So now you see that all cells are filled in with numbers and uh, it's time to find a pattern. Uh, how can we use these numbers? Uh, let me explain you. Uh, what you should understand by looking at this table? Of course, there are many conclusions that can be made, but I ask you to find the most reliable. Uh, you may notice that every time when this indicator was positive, I mean positive for dollar and negative for yen, what means not only that actual number was higher than expected, 
but that first market reaction was to increase. So in these cases, the price always dropped in the period from 5 to 15 minutes. For example, at March 4th. The difference was 47 thousands and the closing price for M5 time frame was uh, 114 and 12. And uh, the, pri the closing price for M15 time frame was 113 and 89. So a little bit er lower. Uh, it can be easily described as overreaction of market participants. You may notice that uh, the same situation happened again and again. So let's just compare the numbers here and here. And so there are a lot of cases of this uh, situation when the price went down after 15 minutes. But uh, of course there are two exclusions. Uh, first happened in, uh, on, on 8th of July when uh, the market skyrocketed in one minute. You see that it, uh, the price moved uh, about uh, 100 pips because uh, the difference between actual and expected value, here it is, uh, was too high. It was uh, one, uh, 112 thousands of working places. And uh, another exclusion happened on 6th of January. But anyway, let, let's, let's calculate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 profitable trades against two losses. Uh, this is what you haven't ever dreamed of. So and now I'm going to reveal you the whole strategy. Once you have completed your research and you have identified the releases that are tradable along with time periods from which you want to trade, you are ready to execute on the market. Now I want to demonstrate to you how it works. You should wait for another news release. Uh, for example, the last date we chose here was uh, May 5th. So um, I know that non-farm payrolls was released on the 2nd of June. And your task was to wait until release and uh, then estimate if the market reaction was positive. Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's check. So, um, if the market reaction was positive, you should sell in the five minutes after the release and close this trade after fifteen minutes after the release. And uh, uh, I believe this tra trade will be or would be uh, profitable. But what we see now, uh, the release was negative and market went down. So uh, when the news is negative, and uh, okay, let's check the statistics. So here it is. It was negative. The actual number was lower than expected and uh, the market also went down so and we see that uh, when uh, the nuisance is negative this rule doesn't work uh, of course no oh, oh, you, you may see for example this is an example or maybe this so you can't find any reliable patterns here uh, in case if the release was negative. 
But uh, of course, analyzing this data, you may find some other patterns. But uh, I suggest you to use them only in case if actual value of this economic indicator has a great difference with expected value. So, for example, if it's um, approximately the same like it was in on December the 2nd, the difference is just 1,000, uh, then there is there was no huge market reaction, the market traded stable, so and there were other factors affected it. Okay, so I prepared three more examples for you. Uh, the next one is ADP non-farm employment changed. So let's uh, try to find another trading pa pattern using these statistics. Uh, just a few words about this indicator. Uh, this data provides an early look at employment growth. Usually, uh, this indicator is released two days ahead of the government released employment data. Uh, it is re released monthly. And again, so the same as uh, non-farm payrolls, when the actual number is higher than the forecast, it's the positive for the economy and positive for dollar against Japanese yen. But um, of course there are some um, uh, exclusions. Okay, so again, I collected all the statistics. Uh, how to trade this uh, particular news? Uh, so now your task is to recognize the pattern. I want you to figure out dates when the difference between high and open of the first minute bar. So you should look at this table, uh, at this column, uh, and look for the difference uh, over 15 pips, but uh, below 30 pips. So here are dates. Uh, it was April the 5th, March 8th, and the 1st of February, and also there are four cases uh, here. It was March the 2nd, January the 6th, the 4th of November, yeah, and the 2nd of December of uh, 2015. So, uh, what can you notice here? Every time it happened, so I mean every time when uh, uh, the different, the difference between high and open was higher than 15 pips but lower than 30 pips, the market continued to follow first reaction. So every time when the indicator is positive and the difference is over 15 pips but below 30 pips, after just one minute after the release, you may open a long trade and close it in five minutes after the release and uh, there will be a high pr probability for this trade to be successful. So you, you see that uh, every time the price goes up. I can't say that uh, the price uh, uh, moved up significantly but just for few pips and um, it's okay because this trade uh, takes only four minutes and it's okay for you to get uh, from two to 15 pips for, for only for four minutes. Okay, so the next uh, news release was published on the 1st of June. Ah, by the way, there was an exclusion on January the 6th and uh, the price, after, after positive reaction, the price went down for fifth pips. Uh, not too much, but um, um, if we see there are six profitable trades against, uh, against one loss. 
I think it's a good statistics. Uh, so here is our calendar and this news was released, here it is, on the 1st of June and the statistics, oh, I mean um, this indicator was positive but um, the difference was huge, it was about, uh, it was 72,000, so let's check what happened. Okay, here is an example, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the indicator was positive and the price skyrocketed and just in one minute. It moves more than 30 pips. Uh, that's why we should ignore this news and not to trade. So it's too much for our pattern. Uh, moreover, in this case, uh, when the price went up for more than 30 pips, you can see an overreaction. So after the first minute, the market decreased, but not much. Uh, usually, um, I can't I can't say that this reaction is ordinary for this market. It's something extraordinary, so you don't have to trade this day anyway. Okay, let's go back to my Excel file uh, because there are two more examples. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, this indicator is called Core Durable Goods Orders. This data shows a change in the total value of new purchase orders placed with manufacturers for durable goods, excluding transportation items. So when the actual number is higher than the forecast, it is positive for the economy and positive for dollar against uh, Japanese yen currency pair and uh, vice versa. I also collected all data but um, uh, I want you to figure out only cases when market reaction was strong. So the price moved more than 10 pips after the first minute. So let's let's find these cases. Here it is. Okay, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten cases. Um, okay, let's first analyze cases when it had a positive effect on the market. So they are marked uh, with yellow color. Every time it happened, the closing price after one minute was higher than after 15 minutes. Yeah, you can find the same thing here, here, and here. The price goes down. Uh, it means that market participants overreacted to positive news. There was all, also one exclusion on uh, on November 23rd. Okay, so and now let's have a look to negative releases when the difference is also higher than 10 pips. So it's minus 10, minus 14, minus 12, minus 35. And in this case, there is another pattern. Uh, every time it was, the market changed its trend. So to use this pattern, 
you should open a long trade after five minutes after the release. For example, here when the price was 114 um, and 92, and uh, close it in 30 minutes after the release. So when the price was uh, 115 and uh, 6. You see that every time it happened, M5 price is higher than M30 price. So opening a long trade here, you may earn uh, up to 15 pips for 25 minutes. Uh, the next event release um, called Durable Goods Orders will be published on 26th of June. Here it is. So you can check whether this pattern works or not yourself. And one more pattern I want to show you. Here it is. Uh, I chose retail sales for British economy to show you that you may take any economic indicator which impacts a certain currency and then you make a research and it's likely that you find a profitable pattern. Uh, another reason why I chose this indicator is because in the time of its release there are no other events published. So that's why I consider these statistics to be more reliable. Uh, I believe you may bank on it. And um, so you have already asked me questions about the currency. Instead of uh, British pound against American dollar, I decided to take a cross course British pound against Japanese yen because uh, this pair is more volatile and uh, that's why our chances to recognize a pattern will be higher. Okay, so a few words about this release. Uh, this news is released monthly, about uh, two day, 20 days after the month ends, and um, it measures the change in the total value of inflation-adjusted sales. This news is important because uh, it's a primary gauge of consumer spending. Okay, so what we should look at. As usual, if uh, actual number is higher than forecast, this is positive for the economy and positive for British pound. And in this case, British pound against Japanese yen should increase. So how to trade this particular news? It's easy. Let's have a look to closing price in just one minute and after 15 minutes after the release. But only in cases when it was significant and negative market reaction. So. Um, uh, saying significant, I mean that the difference should be higher than 10 pips. For example, minus 10, minus 14, and so on. So all these cases are marked with blue color. Okay, so here are dates. For example, April 23rd, February the 17th, and so on. And Every time when uh, market reaction was negative, the price after one minute here was higher than after 15 minutes. So you may see it here and here, or here and here. And the difference between uh, M1 price and M15 price is uh, sometimes is very high and it means that you can earn uh, more money. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why I choose this um, cross currency. Uh, 
Okay, so how to use it? Just after one minute, after the release, you uh, you should open a short trade. So it means you should sell and close this trade in 15 minutes after the release. Okay, so the next uh, release of this news where is it? If I'm not mistaken, it will be published on uh, 16th of June, but uh, I can't find it. Okay, let's check. Yeah, here it is. No, no, it was fifteenth um, of June. So, and um, this event will be published in uh, five days. So, you may check this strategy yourself. So, what you should look in for, uh, you should uh, figure out if the release is negative, and uh, then uh, uh, the market reaction should be negative, and uh, the price should move. Uh, up to 30 pips down and then after one minute you can sell this currency and you should close the price after or you should close the trade after 15 minutes after the release this is how you can earn money trading just a few times a month uh, of course it's too rare but um, it depends on uh, the number of news releases you use uh, and I highly recommend you to use other news releases and uh, collect statistics and identify your own trading patterns. Okay, so this is all I wanted to tell you about uh, how to trade news using this strategy in this webinar. If you have some questions, don't uh, hesitate to ask them. All right, Victor, we have a question from our friend Sundar. He says, so the difference is more than 10 to 15 pips, then open a short or long trade depending on whether the one minute candle is bearish or bullish respectively and close it in 15 minutes, specifically in regards to Japanese yen cross pairs, right? Uh, it depends on um, a certain uh, news releases. For example, if we speak about uh, ADP, ADP non-farm employment change, yes, uh, but we should look only uh, for positive releases and um, we should uh, check if the price uh, went up n not more than 30 pips. For example, if we uh, trade another news releases like retail sales, then we look only for negative releases. And uh, then uh, we check if the price um, went uh, down more than 10 pips. So uh, I can't say that uh, these uh, patterns are similar. So, so the market reaction is different to any event. So, um, I can't say that there is something similar between uh, non-farm uh, payrolls and ADP non-farm employment change. But other news are very different. And uh, so, you should identify it, uh, every, uh, each pattern on each event. But generally, yeah, you are right. So you should wait for one minute candle and then um, you should decide whether it um, uh, suits your criteria and then you open a trade.
Okay, Victor, we have another question from uh, a person who has uh, signed with the letters RH and he asks, does the strategy work across all news releases and does it work on high, medium and low impact news? Okay, so as I see and uh, according from my experience, uh, this uh, strategy works uh, only if we use high or medium impact uh, releases. So, because uh, when uh, when uh, when a certain event has no affection on the market, then uh, we just uh, can't figure out the pattern. Uh, and uh, as so, you ask me if it works for every um, release. No, I don't think so because I analyzed a lot of releases and. Uh, uh, in 50% of all releases I analyzed, it's hard to find a reliable pattern. You, of course, you can find something and uh, you can make some trades, but uh, I won't bank on this strategy. So, I mean, uh, on this pattern, if I uh, see that there was, for example, uh, six winning trades and uh, three losing trades. So, it means that this pattern is not reliable. For example, uh, like in this case, where there are 12 uh, uh, profitable trades and only two losses, I would bank on it, definitely. So your task is to analyze data, yourse data yourself. You, you, of course, you can use my data, these four news that I trade. But uh, yeah, your task is to analyze yourself and uh, create your own trading patterns. And sometimes they also change. So, for example, uh, one pattern can work for uh, one year, like, uh, but then it stops, and you should, um, you should again, you should collect data and find uh, another pattern you, on this uh, certain event. So, is everything clear about uh, releases and uh, collecting data? I assume everything sounds very clear and I believe that you explained <laughs> the two questions in a very comprehensive way. I hope that Sundar and RH think uh, the same way. Guys, if you have more questions, feel free to ask them now and Victor will be happy to answer and even if I can join too if I can be helpful too. So feel free to ask your questions. Now is the right moment. Okay, Damien, what if we can share this template with our subscribers? Uh, you mean the Excel table? Yeah, the Excel table, so they can um, just uh, look at this table every day and, for example, if they don't remember something, they can just open the file. Absolutely, that would be a great idea. I would be happy to upload this Excel table in our private trading community, so you will be able to to get it and use it for free all the time, and it, I believe that it's going to be a great, uh, a, like a great addition to your toolbox, for example, with your instruments. In the meantime, while I was speaking, we got two more questions, and mm -hmm. the first one comes from RH again, and he's asking, how long has Victor been trading this strategy? Um, for one year, from um, April. Uh, 2016. Okay, and the second question comes again from Sundar, and he's asking, so why not trade the one minute the moment the actual news is released? Uh, yeah, so this is what I was talking um, um, in the beginning of the webinar, because you can't catch the price. For example, you, you you decided that the price would uh, go up and yes you are right you open a long trade but uh, uh, you you really you can't open a trade because um, there will be a slippage and for example you want to open at the price of um, 100 but uh, you will open it uh, at 110 so uh, it will um, affect your profitability and your profit factor
All right, Victor, we have uh, one more question that comes from uh, Eli Burstein, our very dedicated member. He's asking, what about multi-pair trades during major events? It allows some hedging against specific pair misbehaving. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, usually I do everything manually when I trade Forex, uh, or when I use this strategy. No, when I trade Forex, sometimes I use algorithms, but if you speak about uh, these exact strategies, I do everything manually. And um, usually I have only time for open a trade on one currency. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm also thinking about an opportunity to uh, uh, hedge this exact trade. For example, uh, after the release of non-farm payrolls, I open a long trade. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I'm also thinking about opening the same um, um, the trade in the same direction using another cross course. For example, um, oh, actually not cross course. For example, American dollar against Canadian dollar. So, or maybe American dollar against Swiss franc. So to hedge uh, this uh, trade. Yeah, it is possible, and um, I'm working on it. But um, actually. Uh, what I recommend you to work first is uh, finding the patterns, analyzing more statistics and more events. All right, Victor, we got one more question from our friend Alfred Q. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name the right way, but I assume this is the right way to say it, Alfred Q. So he's asking, did you use buy stop or sell stop orders? Uh, no, uh, so using this strategy, no, I, um, I'm i just waiting until the candle uh, is closed and then I open a trade. So I don't uh, need to use a sell stop or buy stop because I just want to know what uh, is the closing price after one minute or five minute candle. So, so I, I just don't need to use this type of orders in this strategy. I can open the trade by market and it's easy and it's also required by this strategy because you should know the price uh, um, and after the candle is closed and only at this moment you open a trade. Okay guys, I encourage you to ask if you have more questions. In the meantime, I'm going to launch our regular poll. Uh, which asks you how sta satisfied are you from this webinar where one is like poor and five is great so I'm launching the poll now and uh, in the meantime think about more questions and I see that Sundar is asking one more question so I'm simply going to read the question Victor until the people vote so Sundar says non-farm seems to be giving the most profitable long trades whenever the difference between actual and forecast is positive mm, yeah so I agree with it and uh, but uh, so what does it mean to be to, to give more profit so I, I think that uh, it will give you more profit if you trade some um, news which are um, which affects only uh, not American economy but uh, like British economy for example when you trade uh, British uh, dollar against Japanese yen it's more volatile and if you can find a reliable pattern it will bring you more money but uh, if we're speaking about non-farm and uh, this example yes so the idea is correct so you should file. Uh, you should find whether this um, event was positive, and uh, the reaction was um, quite good. So the market passed, uh, or the market, the price moved for at least uh, 20 pips. Okay, uh, we are uh, getting a couple more questions, uh, Victor. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first one comes from Elia Burstein. 
and he is asking, do you know of a good source to receive event history data or an indicator or EA? Um, okay, so uh, if we, yeah, uh, I believe you can find um, this data uh, in Forex calendars. There is, uh, uh, for example, if you open uh, any Forex calendar, there is uh, not only the date of a uh, current release, but uh, some statistics about previous releases. And uh, as for uh, indicator value, you can find it there. But um, if you are speaking about how to fill uh, this part of the table, so how to fill the prices, uh, then I think you should open MetaTrader. And uh, if you don't have enough data there, uh, just uh, use uh, History Center and download data. So, and uh, this is how you can collect data manually. Uh, it will be great if you will write a script or an expert advisor and will share with me. <laughs> so it will make our life easier, but uh, sometimes there can be mistakes if you do everything automatically. All right, Victor, the next question comes again from RH. Thank you, by the way, guys, for being so active. We really appreciate this. After all, this is the purpose of the webinar. So we love to answer questions because, after all, this is how we manage to, <laughs> to push the stuff upward uh, with these webinars, and we hope that we're useful. So the next question is from RH, and he's asking, if using non-farm payrolls as example, is the same pattern seen across the American dollar, Japanese yen, and the American dollar, Canadian dollar for same news release? Ah, so uh, uh, I just, uh, I, I didn't analyze um, uh, American dollar against Canadian dollar uh, because it's, it's not so well volatile. So uh, the reaction, as I see from the first glance, the reaction was uh, not so, Mm, not so high or not so strong as um, if we compare it to American dollar against Japanese yen. So that's why I just decided not to analyze American dollar against Canadian. So I can't say. All right, very good. I think we don't have any more questions. Uh, and uh, I believe we can move on because I believe we're. Um, uh, we're close to the end of the webinar, is that correct, Victor? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, then uh, since we don't have any more questions, uh, I would really like to, and yeah, that's me again, I would really like to thank you about attending this webinar, and that's Victor down over here, yeah. uh, who did a very good job, by the way. Uh, I really would like to uh, thank you for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, and after all, it was like the first webinar that uh, ooh, uh, me, I mean, I am launching. And uh, thank you very much for attending. I believe we answered a lot of questions this time. Also, I would like to let you know that the webinar is currently being recorded. So it is going to be available uh, on our website at uh, www.forexball.com slash webinar webinars so you will be able to watch the replay of this webinar all the time whenever you want also we will uh, notify you by an email when the webinar replay is ready so you will be able to to constantly like watch the whole webinar database including this webinar so again thank you very much for attending this webinar we're going to end up the session now and uh, I would like to see you also on the next webinars. Feel free to be active at our private trading community and to participate at the live analysis sessions, which I am conducting. And maybe we can do soon one with maybe Victor or our other mentor who is like Vlad Sipos. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and you collect a lot of tips doing on the upcoming trading week. So still not sure when we're going to launch the next webinar during the month, but I assume it's going to be maybe in the middle or at the end of uh, June. So stay tuned because soon we're going to announce the news topic. 
So thank you very much again for attending. I wish you have a wonderful weekend, and both of us, we say bye-bye to you. Bye-bye. Thank you.